Hey guys, it's Jordan from Jordan Budgets. I am filming at 10 p.m. on Sunday. So I live right on the coast in Mississippi and I'm currently in the middle of Hurricane Ida and I cannot sleep. I just can't sleep, okay? So I, I have two little boys, I'm a single mom and I, I don't wanna go to sleep and then a tornado warning hit and my alarm like wake me up in a panic. You know what I'm saying? So I thought why not use this time and be a little bit productive. I've been wanting to share with you guys my Etsy shop starting budget, which is just my sort of expected amount that I wanted to pay to open my Etsy shop, exactly what I paid for all of the things and then how much I actually spent. So if you have been around my channel, you already know this, but if you're new, I just want to say that this is a budgeting channel. On this channel, we talk about budgeting, we do cash stuffings, that kinds of thing. And I do have a budgeting related Etsy shop that I just opened. It is, like I said, it's Sunday night. And so it is exactly one week since I opened and I have had 23 sales. I'm so happy. Thank you guys for supporting the channel. You know, you set little like goals for yourself, even if it's something that you're creating as a hobby and for fun, you have these little goals and like hopes and wishes. Well, my hope was that my Etsy shop would have seven sales in its first week and I had 23 sales. So I really thank you guys for that because I know it's a lot of my viewers from YouTube who are supporting that shop and going over there and making those purchases. So I guess I just wanted to give a little bit of a background because I am going to be making Etsy shop related videos, largely budget related and setting it up and how much I'm making and how much I'm spending because I do feel like that's sort of like on par with what we're doing here on this channel is talking about budgeting and money. But if this video is pulling you in and you have not seen any of the other things on my channel, I just wanna go ahead and let you know that it is a budgeting channel and I will continue to have these Etsy related videos, I think in a few weeks because this is the end of week one for me. So in a few weeks, I will do a one month on Etsy recap and give you guys all of the details on how much I'm making versus how much I'm spending and how much Etsy's taking, all of the things. So that was a rather lengthy intro. Um, I apologize for that. I, it's, you know, it's probably just because it's me doing this video, but also I just want to remind you again, I'm in the middle of a hurricane, single mom, and I've had a lot of caffeine today. So that could be a problem, you know, that I'm facing as well. So I've already taken the time to write out the things that I bought and everything that I can list, which is probably 95% of it, will be listed in the description below. So if you see something you're interested in, then it will be listed below. I just created this little template really quickly. It is Etsy shop starting budget. I have my starting budget. I'm going to break down what my actual budget was. And I do have this principle listed on my shop if you're interested in that. It is listed for $1.99. Etsy takes most of that money, I'm not gonna lie, but I want to get it to you guys as cheaply as I can. And I have found it helpful to break my expenses up in this way. So I've already gone ahead and written down the things that I've purchased these last couple weeks to get my Etsy shop open. And I'm breaking everything down into business expenses, marketing expenses, create, which is like, items I needed to create my thing, the things in my shop, wholesale and packaging. So let's get started. So first off, the very first thing I bought was a five foot table. It is one of those lifetime folding tables from Walmart and I paid $43 and 84 cents. I didn't necessarily need this like like hardcore need it, but I knew that I needed a little more space to work with for printer setup and to work with the products that I'm making. So I went ahead and bought that. General office supplies, I paid $16 for a couple of different types of cardstock because I started out, so I started out with one style of cardstock that I had on hand. I used that for a, a little bit of my products and then I realized I wasn't as crazy about it as I felt I should be because I'm a perfectionist and I want everything that I send out to be the absolute best it can be. So I spent $16 on three different types of cardstock as well as tape, as well as tape for packaging, which is just one of these little like 
easy start packaging, you know, like a general tape. I bought the different card stock to play around with the different styles and different weights to find exactly what I wanted and what what did exactly what I wanted wanted it to do. Uh, and and I did. I found the card stock that I liked, and then that tape is just for packaging. Next, I have an income expense tracker. I highly recommend this item. I'm going to get that for you and show you guys. Oh, let me backtrack. So on the general office supplies, I did buy this with that $16. It is no bend. Uh, handle with care. Do not bend. Stickers. I picked these up at Walmart and they were very cheap. Um, I will list them when I find them and I'll list them below. But I put these on every single one of my packages. Although the way I package it, I don't really think that you could bend it even if you wanted to. But I go ahead and cautiously place that on everything. Okay, going back to the income expense tracker, I got this on Amazon for $12 and it breaks down income versus expenses. And this has been really helpful for me to write down every day what my expenses are. And then now that I am making some money on income, I write down the income as well. And then you can balance those out at the end of the day and see if you came out ahead for the day or behind for the day. I will be honest and tell you guys so far, I'm usually in the red at this point because I have just to start it. I've needed to make these purchases. So hopefully that turns around. I do feel like now that I've bought everything on this list, I'm at a point where I don't need to make these big purchases every day because we've been at a point where I started purchasing for my shop two weeks ago. The shop has been live for a week. So I thought I had everything after at the opening of my shop. And then in this first week, I've realized a lot of things that I needed, or there's a few items on here that I have to expand my listing options. So I am now at a point where I don't think there's any big upcoming needs this week or, you know, anytime soon. So we should be in the green going forward. The other business expense or the next business expense is a domain name. You guys might know if you've been watching me that Etsy did not let me open shop at first. I think because I listed a printable right off the bat, as soon as I opened my shop, they kind of flagged my account as something they wanted to check out. So I had planned on Etsy opening and I didn't want them not opening me to deter me from going ahead and starting the thing. So I bought a domain name and I was selling on there for a little bit and then I went to Etsy a few days later. So I bought a domain name for $14, probably was not a necessary purchase, but I don't regret it. It was just part of the process. It was a learning experience for me and I'm glad I did it because it sort of forced me to just go ahead and start. All right, a PO box. I paid $67. That is for six months of a PO box. I thought that was important to me. I know a lot of people start Etsy shops and they just use their physical address. I wanted the P.O. box just for peace of mind. And so I paid $67 for six months for the P.O. box. I also got 60 stamps. So Etsy charges at a minimum $350 for their shipping if you do their shipping with tracking. Because some of my listings are so cheap, in order for me to get the items to you guys at an affordable price, I do not ship items that are $15 or less with tracking. I purchased these stamps and this is really all I need to send those items that are $15 or less. The different stamps are just different amounts. If you guys are not familiar with postage, I went to the post office and I literally sat with that lady. Her name is Kelly. I sat with Kelly and she was so sweet. She sat with me for 20 minutes and we talked all about shipping, exactly what I needed to do and how I needed to ship things the cheapest versus when I should consider using tracking. So she broke all that down for me and the, basically I'll give you a quick rundown, but these are non-machinable surcharges. They're a little more expensive, but if I don't want it to run through the machine and bend up the letters, I pay for a little bit more expensive of a stamp. These are just regular stamps in case I need them at some point. I was just so impressed with her. Honestly, I was just like, just give me all the stamps because I appreciated that she spent so much time with me. I don't know that I necessarily will need these because I will be sending everything as non-machinable, which means basically at the USPS stores, like they scan it. They won't send it through the machines where my stickers and my products have a chance of bending. 
So I paid for that. And then for every extra ounce, so it can be an ounce and you only have to use this, I want to say it was 75 cents. So you only have to pay the 75 cents for if it is non-machinable, like you don't want it to bend, but it's an ounce or, or less. If it's more than an ounce for every extra ounce, you add a 20 cents sticker. So that total, so for 60 stamps of different amounts, this one's 75, 55, and then 20. For different purposes, I have 60 stamps totaling $30. If you're new to my channel and you're not used to my ranting and my sort of talking around the world before I get to what I'm saying, then I am sorry. For those of you that are used to listening to me and used to listening to me struggle through my sentences, I appreciate you for coming back every single week and sticking it out with me. <laughs> okay, so now that is all of my business expenses and I'm gonna total those and see what our business total amount is. So our business total expenses is $182.84. And then after we work through all of these categories, we will add all these amounts out and see what our total amount spent for these first couple of weeks opening the Etsy shop. Okay, next we have marketing. I consider marketing anything that I'm spending on making my pictures better or uh, listing, you know, like marketing on Etsy. Anything like that would be a marketing cost. Now, because I sort of have, as a hobby already take pictures and have a little bit of lighting and setup because I was already on YouTube for a month as just a hobby, I already have all the lights and things that I need. The only thing I spent on marketing this month is two binders. Those are two A6 size binders. They are the blue and green binders that you see in a lot of my pictures on my Etsy shop. If you pop on over to my Etsy shop, you'll see what I mean, but it is just these blue and green money binders. I already had money binders that I had been using for my cash stuffing because it's something that I already do. However, those were, are, those, they still exist. They are not past tense. Those are brown colors. And for the prints that I have, they just go better with greens and blue binders. So I sort of strategically found out these binders on Amazon because I thought blue and green would go better with my pictures. So for marketing, I only spent $16 total. Now to actually create my product, the first thing I purchased was an A6 hole punch and that was $17 off of Amazon. And it is a great one. So let me show it to you guys. It is very sturdy and well-made, so I'm happy with this purchase. It has different, I don't know if you guys can see in there, but it has the different sizes. And I actually found out because of this hole punch that the A6 binders that we all use for budgeting is actually a personal size. If you move it, if you get this and you try to move it over to the A6 size, it's not gonna work. It doesn't line up correctly. So I'm not sure if this is just labeled differently, but to be fair, I did, when I saw that this did not line up with the A6 binders that we all use for cash budgeting, I looked up the size of an A6 and the binders that we use is not a true A6. So it's a little confusing, I don't know why they market our cash binders as size A6 because I honestly think that's false. But anyway, that was a random rant. This hole punch is very sturdy and it was only $17. So that was a great purchase. That absolutely was a requirement for what I do. And then I also bought a corner rounder for $10. Let me show you what that is. This is another great purchase. So if you look at my products, you will notice that the trackers that I make, they are rounded at the edges and this is the whole bunch I use for that. You can choose different types of rounding, like different sizes. And um, yeah, I think this was a great purchase for $10. And again, absolutely something that I needed. The Furbon paper cutter was only $10 and I would love to try a more expensive brand and I may eventually, but this one had amazing reviews on Amazon. So I went with it and honestly, it works great. I am not sure if there is a big difference. If you use a more expensive paper cutter, please let me know if you've noticed a difference in this one versus a more expensive brand because you know if it's easier to use something more expensive, then maybe I'll make that 
purchase because I do use this a lot for what I'm doing. But for $10, I thought this was a great, great find and a great start to keep me on budget. Uh, removable stickers and labels. So actually, let me show you guys. For my labels and my sticker set, I needed these stickers to go on front of my envelopes. It's just one of the things I sell in my Etsy shop. And I started out buying a just general labels that you can find in the store that were not removable. And let me tell you, they are not removable, okay? That, like the marketing did not lie when it says not removable. Those things did not come off no matter what I did. Now, I sell these removable stickers, but I do want to preface that with the fact that for, I guess, just for the knowledge of anyone who is purchasing from my shop, these are extremely removable for the first few hours, but I've noticed on these particular envelopes, if you let them sit on them for days, then it becomes very hard to get off. You do have, now they do come off. You can soak them or you can use some kind of alcohol solution or something like that. And then they come off just fine. It will not ruin your envelopes. Again, I'm a perfectionist. So I test and work with everything that I am selling and everything that I'm doing. If you just soak them and scrub on them a little bit, they will come off very easily. That was just a little side note just in case you're purchasing for me. Anyway, I pay a ton of money for these removable stickers and labels. I paid $60 for a sort of bundle of them to get me started. And um, they are very high quality and I am happy I'm paying the cost that I am and that I went ahead and purchased the better labels because I think that the quality, you know, quality is just important to me. Okay, so after I made that general office supplies run and I played around with a few different card stocks. I found the card stock that I like. It, it is 110 weighted card stock. And I went back and purchased a few more packs of that, or I think two packs of that card stock for $8. I have a laminator, I have a printer. So those things were great things that have, are helping me with my business. Both of them work great. However, I, I've noticed that the laminator that I was previously using and had at the start, like when first creating my business, it takes forever to heat up between runs. It starts to not work as well. So I went ahead and invested in a nicer laminator during that first week of opening and I paid $39.99 for that. Everything in my shop, I use the five mil lamination sheet. It makes the world of a difference. I would highly recommend if you're selling any paper products that are laminated to use five mil, not three mil because the three mil is just, it's a world of a difference between the two. Okay, I hope you guys are good with like a ranty video because I always tell myself I'm gonna like cut to the chase and be quick for you guys and like that never happens. Okay, $68, $39.99 and $35.40. Can you guys hear the winds outside? It is nuts, okay? I know I'm filming in a hurricane, so like I guess I should expect it but still, okay, $180 and 39 cents for tools to create the products that I've listed on Etsy. Okay, so next is wholesale. That's items that I'm purchasing already made. That's not stuff that I have to make or tools to make what I'm doing. Like it's just things that are already made that I'm trying to get a great price on to include in kits and things that I'm selling in my Etsy shop. So I will start with this one because I think this one was basically a mistake, but <laughs> I did pay $14 for zipper envelopes that go in the A6 binders. I bought one pack of them. Let me get it. So I did purchase a pack of these envelopes that we all use in our cash spending, in our cash spending envelope system. I I'm not sure why I bought them because when I bought them, I did not have a clear idea of what I would need them for because I'm because of just what's in my shop right now. So I bought these. I would say these are probably my only like regret purchase. I think I just got excited and was like, ooh, cash envelopes and binders. So I did purchase that for $14. I think out of everything, that's the only thing I really did not need. Now, the thing that put me over the budget, I'm going to go ahead and tell you guys I'm over budget, but the thing that put me over was I did invest in a bundle of A6 clear binders. I will show those to you guys now. I sure hope my like roof does not like 
collapse in during the storm because this would this video would take like a completely different turn. I purchased a bundle of these wholesale because they are going to be needed for the next product that I'm offering on my shop. Currently, I don't have a complete system listed for sale, but the next thing that I'm working on launching, I'm going to need these A6 clear binders. And so to get those at a wholesale price so that I can get them cheaply to you guys, I did pay $101.72. And that pushed me over my budget because when I first started my Etsy shop, two weeks ago is when I started planning. I opened a week ago and I did not initially plan on having any binders in my shop. However, I think it is going to be important to include in my shop somewhere just for those who are going there and do not already have a system because currently everything that I offer is basically to supplement a cash stuffing envelope system for somebody who's already started with their cash stuffing, um, cash stuffing journey. But if there are those of you who are new to cash stuffing, who would like a complete system, I need to have some binders in my, in my shop. So I am, uh, basically I'm launching a whole system very, very soon. And it's going to be different from everything I'm already offering. Okay, so let's just add that up. I don't need the calculator. I can tell that it's gonna be $115.72 towards wholesale items. Packaging, this category took me for a little bit of a run because as I explained before, I wasn't too sure what I was doing as far as how I was mailing things and what I was gonna do. So I started out with these 100 seven by nine rigid mailers. Okay, my camera cut off because it thinks that I talk too much, but basically I was just saying the seven by nine mailers. So I started my shop, I opened my shop thinking the seven by nine mailers was all that I was gonna need. However, I found once I started to learn a, bit, a little bit about mailing and packaging that the seven by nine is just not, one, it was not aesthetically pleasing, two, it was not exactly what I needed to secure everything in the best way. So if you are somebody that purchased from me the very first week, you know who you are. I appreciate you so much. And I want to say I am so sorry for the ugly packaging, the poor, just the situation as a whole. I think that my products were great. I think that my packaging was absolute garbage. And I learned that and I made a lot of purchases this week to sort of be a little bit, you know, more on par in the future. So I paid $28.99 for those 100 rigid mailers. At this point, I think I found better packaging options this week that are going to work better for what I offer right now. I, of course, am happy to have these 100 rigid mailers for in the future when my offerings in the shop might line up with needing that kind of packaging. But this is another one of those just like the zipper envelope things that I kind of learned as I went that I didn't really need that. I just did not have the forethought to think about exactly what kind of packaging I needed. Anyway, long rant. Okay. I also spent, um, I wrote this down while the camera was off and I was talking to myself because my camera died. I spent $22 on thank you stickers and cards. Okay. These are the rigid mailers that I was just talking about. If we can fit it in the full screen. Again, I'm happy to have these, but these are going to take the back burner for just a little bit as I use some different packaging options. The thank you stickers. I got these on Amazon. I will list them below. I think they are the cutest and I absolutely mean it when I send these out. Your order made my day. I hope getting this makes your day too. And I think they're super cute. And like I said, I, I really mean it. I resonated most and related most to these stickers when I saw them. So I picked those up. And the thank you card, it just says thank you for your order. And I thought it would be a nice little place to write a note. I don't know that I will continue using these Currently, I've been writing, just writing people's names on it, and then I've been printing a little more personalized note with my, more my branding and my colors. So I did buy that though. And then tissue paper, I spent $11 on a bulk order of tissue paper just to package those orders in. And then A6 envelopes, I bought these envelopes initially with the idea that I might need them to create with. However, I started creating my own envelopes, which is going to be in my next launch. But I, I did not need these, but it turns out they are the perfect size to send 
one of my offerings, which is the, the labels only. So if you buy the labels only set that's on my Etsy shop, it comes in this very thick A6 envelope and I compared it to about six other envelopes. It is the absolute thickest and best quality. The only downfall is a lot of envelopes have the removable tab and you can just put it down. Of course, with COVID, you don't want to be licking anything right now. I'm not like licking and closing the envelopes. I've just been putting a big strip of tape across them. So that is the only down, downfall, but because they are so thick, I think it's definitely worth it to keep and to use for packaging. And I paid $16 for these A6 envelopes. I think it was for a hundred of them, but again, I got those on Amazon, so I will list it below if you're interested and you wanna check those out. To make my packaging cuter, I went with these little mailers, which is sort of my, one of the colors that I use for the Jordan Budgets YouTube channel. So it's like one of my quote, like one of my colors. Um, and it is, so it was, it's four by eight size. I got 50 of them for $7.05. You can't beat that. That is an amazing price and it helps me keep my costs low in my shop. So I got those. The other thing I have, and I do not have them yet, but I bought 62 eight and a half by 12 bubble mailers. It is, I'm going to need that for the launch that I'm putting up later this week. So I just bought those on Amazon for $20, which is the best price that I could find for that size. Then the other thing and the very last thing on our list is these little uh, cellophane bags that you pull the little, the little tab and it makes it sticky so that you can fold it down. It does not fit some of my items, but I'm still using it for now until I can get different sizes. I, again, I'm so sorry to those of you that I mailed this week, but I realized that I needed these and I did not have them yet. So what I ended up doing was cutting up some little bags and sort of like makeshifting something to send. It was absolutely atrocious. And I'm sorry to those of you that had to witness that, but I learned my lesson. Thank you for letting me use you as a learning experience. And I paid $8.99 for 350 of those bags. And let me tell you, after cutting up little baggies and trying to make it look cute this week, $8.99, it was an absolute need and I'm happy to pay that money. So let's, we're just adding up the packaging totals. And let's see what we are at. $8.99. Oh my gosh, I just ruined that. Okay. Let me try that again without talking, guys. For packaging, I paid $114.03. And $114.03. If I would have paid attention to exactly what I need versus just buying something that I thought made sense. Um, I could have saved that $28.99 and it would have only been $85.04. So I will say if you are starting an Etsy shop, don't think about like, oh, I have paper products, so I need rigid mailers. Think about the actual size of how people might be buying your items and what you might need. Okay, so we are going to add up all of these totals for business total, marketing total, create, wholesale and packaging, add those up, get our complete total and see what we actually paid to start our Etsy shop. So in total to start our Etsy shop, we paid $608.98. I do want to take off, so those A6 clear binders that I just bought to launch later this week, we would have been at $507.26. So we would have been very, very close to our original budget on everything we needed to start the shop. But I do have that big launch coming later this week. And that is just something that I absolutely needed. So I thought it was worth it just to go ahead and invest in myself, believe in my little shop and make those purchases and trust that they will sell. So I did pay a little more than expected, but you know, so that is it. That is everything that I purchased to start my Etsy shop. Again, the links are below if you're interested in purchasing any of these things for your shop. 
and this little template is in my Etsy shop, which again is listed below. If you are interested in seeing how my budget works out, definitely subscribe to stay in touch with my Etsy related videos because I will be doing the next video will be in three weeks and that's going to be where I, I'm not going to break down all of these expenses again, but keeping in mind that I'm starting with an, a negative $608.98, basically, like I'm starting out $600 in the hole. I'm going to track if I made up that money, like in my first month, if I was able to recoup that $608 or if I'm still in the hole and kind of give you guys a little bit of a breakdown on Etsy fees and things as well. So it'll be like a whole Etsy one month recap type video that will come at you in three weeks. Hopefully we will not be in the middle of a hurricane when I film that next video and you won't hear that like whistling around in the background. If you made it all the way through this video, guys, thank you so much. I appreciate you. I love you guys. And I'm so thankful to those of you that have subscribed and keep tuning in with me. You guys have not only helped keep me accountable in my budgeting for my own personal life, you have encouraged me to start this shop and you encourage me every single time I upload a video and I just love you and I thank you for that. And I appreciate you guys spending probably, what are we at, like 30 minutes now? <laughs> spending 30 minutes with me in the middle of this hurricane, you have helped me make this time productive instead of just sitting around worrying about a hurricane. So I appreciate you, I love you, thank you so much and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>